facing the right way. Is there some magic going on? Oh, but <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> Alright, so um, uh, my name's Tim, and um, uh, pardon? Yeah, I'm going to be quick. It's really interesting to see everybody's projects. Um, people that seem to be really good at math are doing uh, problem solving type uh, projects. Uh, some people that are a little more creative seem to be doing hardware type stuff. Uh, it's definitely a level of creativity to it. Um, I don't know, most of you, I've never uh, touched anything hardware related or anything. I mean, this was uh, this was a pretty impressive achievement for a lot of us uh, <laughs> at the time. Just turning the light all of us that was worthy of taking a picture of. So my uh, my project is um, um, I'm building a um, I took the car from Mac and um, put um, some hardware and boots turned into an alarm clock. So I took all the best features of uh, and we'll see how it works out. Uh, hopefully good. Um, most likely it'll end up something like that, but uh, here's, here's, uh, here's the end. So, uh, the objectives, obviously, to um, operate and display a fully adjustable clock, um, to have uh, fully functional alarm features, such as, you know, snooze and uh, time setting, have it be able to turn on and off. Um, I'm a chronic snooze button presser, so I made it so essentially you, don't, you can only get one snooze out of it. And um, the second time it doesn't do anything, it won't snooze anymore, it just wails away. Um, and then some other uh, fun things I did to it was um, just dress it up a little bit, uh, put some underglow on it, uh, um, obviously some other lights to display things like AM, PM, the arms on or off. Um, sorry, it doesn't come out a bit better than that, but uh, obviously, um, Software, software implementation. Um, learning the Arduino language was quite challenging. I've never, I mean, until three weeks ago, I had no idea of how hardware talked to software, software talked to hardware, rather, until uh, Hunter showed me his, and essentially it's just, a, you know, rows of ports, pins, that you can just assign input, output, uh, control them via software, uh, which is really interesting. So obviously there's uh, a lot of a lot of hardware specific coding. Um, just uh, setting up the pins themselves, like whether they're, you can adjust these, a lot of pins to whether they're just straight up input or output. So obviously output you're controlling LEDs, input you're controlling sensors or buttons. Um, and there's different types of, uh, different types of input and output, just basic digital on off. There's serial, which uh, can, get uh, assigned different values. And uh, serial commands are um, very similar to address buses where they, uh, uh, you control hardware via um, like an actual command line instead of just an on-off. So uh, once again, this, uh, this is the basics of the hardware that I used. Uh, the Arduino board itself, a real time chip versus just taking the time from the Arduino itself. That way, if the power goes out, um, or I just straight up unplug it, uh, it keeps its time. And the uh, the, L the seven segment uh, LCDs, they're controlled serial, so I don't need, you know, obviously seven times four plus, you know, four, five, six dots is, you know, a lot of pins that you hate to have to control them all individually. There's just straight up not enough uh, pins on the board to do that. So uh, definitely what I've learned um, is uh, the link between hardware and software is, uh, I mean, it's how it works, right? Desoldering. Yeah, desoldering. I uh, tried desoldering some things. Uh, didn't work out so well. Um, you know, need for good planning. Our, um, there's always challenges with hardware, always. You know, things like buttons not working or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, and just yeah, useful, implement, useful implementation of things like uh, pulse width and modulation and stuff like that. Um, challenges I've ran into. Um, strangely enough, with the Arduino, there's like no user manual as such. It's just <laughs> random uh, uh, little samples and snippets of code that uh, 
uh, you just copy and paste and uh, try and get it to work for your own uh, your own little operation. Um, definitely soldering mishaps. Uh, um, the actual uh, physical making of the car itself was quite the mess at home. <laughs> Not fun. And um, so, as for the car itself, I've got it and it's ready to go. Here, the um, um, it should be fully powered, and which it is. Are you ready to see it? Yep. Yeah. Come on, are you ready to see it or what? Yeah. Ah. It's um. It's hard to see with the lights off, but it's uh, it's it's blue carbon fiber, the shell. Uh, I've embedded the L, the seven segment into the uh, into it and then clear coated over it. Um, the snooze, um, I, I have it set up so the snooze button uh, is just you just push down the lid, and it uh, turns on uh, turns on the back lights, and uh, there's an underglow as well, which is hard to see with the lights on, um, but. Uh, as far as uh, like the lights, that's just for demo purposes right now. The lights themselves will uh, be for displaying AM, PM, and if the alarm's on or off. Uh, the time is right now fully adjustable. Um, 12 hours and minutes, the way it goes. Um, which was uh, absolutely atrocious to try and uh, get. The way uh, you input the time is uh, uh, from the real time chip to change it. It was quite challenging because uh, without getting too much into it, the suppression of leading zeros causes quite the challenge uh, to uh, when you have to send it as a string. Um, other than that, um, it's certainly I've certainly got a bit to go. Uh, the alarm, uh, I can turn it on and off, and I can't select a time yet, but it is quite. Uh, uh, it's not too challenging to add that to it. Um, is that sent to just a random? Yeah. Yes, yes, but it will like if I uh, if I unplug it and plug it back in, it should have kept the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is four twenty-two. What? No, it's not. Three forty-two. Three forty-two. Three forty-two. Three forty-two. Three forty-two. I don't know why I didn't keep the time there. It, uh, <laughs> I kept it that time. So why it does sometimes, why it doesn't, uh, so that's just error checking and debugging from there. Um, any questions? It sounds extremely loud and annoying. I, uh, I was, originally I was going to use um, the MP3 shield and play music for alarms, but uh, I just, it was 40 bucks, I got 40 bucks at the time. Uh, so I just bought a little piezo buzzer. Uh, just okay, I've never really bought one before, so I just picked one randomly. Uh, sounds like I picked a 3000 hertz one, and it sounds like a smoke detector, which is horrible. Oh, uh, <laughs> cool. So, yeah, and uh, obviously, the limitations of trying to create something that reflects a finished product is space constraints. Actually, because you can, you know, like, um, all originally intent, all this has to fit inside there still, and it will. It's taking, it's to challenge. Like I'll show you on the, quickly on the inside of the car here. Um, like I've kept the cables extremely neat, and uh, like uh, with uh, you know made some really nice bus rows and whatnot. And uh, but still, like the Arduino is originally going is going to sit where the uh, my little breadboard is here, and just do the cables standing up and whatnot. I've got it. I've got some work to do. So what was the most challenging? The most challenging was getting uh, to be able to properly change time. Because you have to send it in a string format, and it has to be a very specific format, uh, like two digits for the hour, a colon, two digits for the minute, a colon, two digits for the seconds. And once again, the real time chip suppresses leading zeros. So, you know, you string, like, you know. Good lord, yeah. Um, <laughs> Aiden helped me, which was awesome, and it, uh, in the end, it worked out great. It really did. So I'm quite happy about that. Any other questions? Okay. okay.